uh, it's a fascinating story in part because of how few guys there were uh, refusing to go to, to go to that war. The US uh, drafted 11 million guys to go to World War II. And the numbers of people who refused were, were, were very small. Um, it's also interesting because of uh, uh, the impact that that group had uh, subsequently, um, a certain number of them had been confined to mental hospital. No, uh, not a certain number of them had been required to work in mental hospitals, and they saw just how disastrous mental health care was in our country. So a certain number of them became advocates for improved mental health care. And one of those uh, World War II uh, conscientious objectors was Dave Dellinger. So. Uh, it, uh, it, they had an impact on the anti-nuclear movement of the 50s and early 60s. And uh, there were a certain number of people, uh, draft resistors, for whom those guys, those World War II conscientious objectors, were their mentors and their seniors. There was a bookstore in Menlo Park called Kepler's Books. And there was a guy named Roy Kepler, who was a World War II conscientious objector. Um, and that was sort of the seedbed of these high school students and, and college students becoming radicalized. Uh, there was a, uh, a clerk who worked there uh, named Ira Sandpearl, who was uh, a Gandhi scholar and was arguing that people develop uh, opposition to the war using nonviolent resistance. And he would give books away to the kids. He wouldn't charge them for the books. He would say, here, you should read this. Uh, so yeah, it's a fascinating story. I think it's very well done. Uh, obviously, Daniel Ellsberg has a certain pizzazz just because of how key a story it was and how suspenseful a story it is. But the, the good war and those who refuse to fight it is a wonderful film too.